All right, I've had several requests to run through uh, my chop saw and uh, pock, pock bench setup. Um, both of these, uh, my chop saw wings and miter box and all that stuff. Both of them I kind of designed as I went, had an idea what I was going for. So um, I'll run you through my design process on these and you guys can tweak them for yourselves. But start with the uh, chop saw. <clears throat> um, I bought uh, one stick of angle iron. It's the aluminum. Um, and chopped it down to, I don't know what that is, about 10 inches. 516 bolts and uh, lock nuts. And then I clamped the angle iron with some uh, clamps some uh, like uh, vice grips here and here <clears throat> and pre-drilled with a uh, eighth inch drill bit and then a five sixteenths same here and here um, clamped this in place and like laid my table or laid my wing on it so that I was just uh, 30 second under that way when you're sliding material or something it's not gonna not gonna catch um, so that was my process through there. Yeah, inch and a half bolts, little lock nut. And figured out where that was gonna set so that, I think I actually clamped, yeah, I clamped the board on where it was gonna sit and drilled through with a uh, uh, eighth and then the 5 sixteenths right in place. Um, and then on the back side of this, used a paddle bit to wallow out the back side so that it can sit down flat. And then you just got the wing nut that goes there. So yeah, my supports are kind of ghetto rigged. My uh, stock wings blew up as they always do. So I just screwed a two by six down. And then these are just, um, some one buys that are pocket screwed together. I ended up going two and five eighths there. Um, I would set up your saw level though and check level and see what act, what actual height that you're gonna need. Um, just two and five eighths worked for me. And then on the back side of the wing, I've got this little block and that little block just rests up against here to keep the wing from ro rotating backwards as you're using the uh, miter box setup, which we'll go through next. So my miter box, drilled this hole here just for storage and transportation. That way I can clamp it all together go like that. Drop there. And then these, I did the same thing. I just clamped this in place and clamped this in place so that I had equal measurement here to here so that my holes lined up like that and like that. And I just made sure I was equal distance off the uh, back of the chop saw. That way I had a nice square cut going this way. <clears throat> and then just use a router, uh, clamped a straight edge on there, used a router, went through like that and then you can slide your box back and forth and tighten her down yeah, you can nest a crown into it and you can still have access to get to your 45s but how can you still see it if you really want to you can peek in underneath you can still see it but you don't need to if you know what I mean Yeah, that's it. Uh, for you guys, probably want dimensions. These were just extra shelves that I didn't need off a of job. So they're just, uh, you know, 12 inches. This one ended up being 45, and this one ended up being the same 12. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, right about five foot. And then my little miter box set up here is yeah, about 45 inches. Um, to get this to get this angle, 
I clamped this in place like this and then set my, clamped it like that and then just took a pencil and moved the, uh, moved the bevel of the slide and traced the outline. Um, yeah, it worked good. Let me know if you, let me know if you guys have any questions.